Let's now find out how close uh, students and other Nigerians are to coming home from Sudan. Joining us is the chairman, Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Ned Kam. Um, Sabike Dabir Ewa, thank you for joining us. She joins us virtually. Talk to us. How soon are students coming back home from Sudan? Thank you, Millicent. Actually, um, uh, a, a, a discuss, what we are doing right now in Sudan to really attend to you. Right now, there's been in, there tremendous progress. There's now a point of contact for every student. Now they're converging at a location that has been given to them by the mission, and buses will take them to a location. We're looking at um, places uh, in Egypt, Luxor, and uh, Luxor, and some other place there. So, really, there's been tremendous progress. Buses have been arranged. Um, Mr. President has uh, given his nod immediately this happened. So there's not now the issue of those students that you mentioned that, you know, gathered together, took a bus somewhere. Now, here's the thing. They've all had to go back to their universities because it was very risky of them. Imagine, just imagine in a war situation, you just see 20 buses moving without any uh, permission from the military authorities will endanger their lives. So that is why they've had to return back to, uh, well, I don't know, I hope you're still seeing me yet. Yes, we can see you and we can <laughs> hear you. You were talking about, you know, the mixed information about uh, conflicting messages, asking students to come out to a certain point, and then uh, I think the embassy coming out to counter that and saying that it isn't safe. Hello, ma'am. Yes, Millicent, sorry, I lost you. I don't know where I lost you. Um, you were talking you about where the students were leaving uh, with a message and then the embassy saying that it wasn't safe and they should head back. Yes. So the nuns, which I understand, came up with this thing that pay $100, come somewhere. But the thing is, move to where? So there's no point taking you from danger to another danger. And there were some people that were leaving that actually had to turn back because they would have been killed. So now they've returned to the various... Um, campuses and the Nigerian mission has now communicated to them a point of connection where the buses will convey them to the most likely places will be some borders in in uh, Egypt and from there they will now be uh, transported back home via um, some airline so that is the situation now and um, I'm sure in a couple of hours we hope to get them moving from that place so the key thing here is that yes we need to um, ensure that they are safe. There's no point putting them in danger while moving. And you cannot move without the permission of the two sides of the military. And that the Nigerian mission has been able to secure. And then the buses have also been arranged and will take the students. And you know, we have a large number of students, as the minister himself said yesterday, that we all need to come back home. So yes, there's been tremendous progress in this regard. I really look forward to uh, welcoming them back home. So clarify to us the number of students who are being evacuated and also the number of non-students. Well, our priority for us are the students. So there's a list of the students with their institutions, with their phone numbers, um, and it runs into thousands, actually. Now, can I tell you something? There are, I'm almost, if I say this, you think we're just, we have about 5 million Nigerians in Sudan. Million, half of the population of Sudan are Nigerians. And we've almost said it, you know, it's just that this diaspora thing, every time you talk about UK, US, we have a lot of them on the African continent. And in Sudan, I'm telling you, they make up almost 5 million in the Sudan, because a lot of them migrated and ended up staying there, and they are Nigerians. So the priority now are the students. The students have written their names, uh, with the missions, both in Khartoum, in Cairo, in Ethiopia, have been working with the students' associations. So the first thing, let's get the students back. And then every other person that wants to come, there is the contact point, but we have to start by one flight, second flight. Yes, Airpeace has made an offer. Um, so it's also the military option of getting the C-130 to go to as many places as possible. But the question is to where? I think that is the first thing. To where? Definitely not Khartoum. So Cairo, uh, Ethiopia, where in Ethiopia, what are the logistics? Those are things that are being put in place now. But the key thing is getting them out by buses. And that is the only way out. When some people tell me America came and took an helicopter, please, let's be realistic. Let us be realistic about you know, what we're talking about here. So the safety is of paramount importance. A lot of effort has gone into it, and they will be back by, by the grace of God.
Indeed, but just, you know, before we lost you, we, we sort of read a long list of the number of people, other citizens of other countries who have evacuated, um, you know, their citizens from Sudan. And many have talked about the slow uh, pace of the Nigerian government to taking the students out of Sudan. Well, I, I, well, I agree with you, it could have been faster. It could have been faster, but the key thing is, let's also ensure that it's safer. Let's also ensure that uh, no life is jeopardized. I agree with you absolutely. It could have been faster. Definitely it could have been faster. But the initial challenges, immediately the war broke out, you cannot fly an airplane. And then those countries you're talking about, can you list them again? UK, US, France, Netherlands? They are part of the, the war in Sudan anyway. US and all those people, they are part of what is going on in Sudan. You see what I'm saying? So yes, but the key thing is, are you talking about peace or talking about safety? Then how many people are we talking about? America can, in fact, the British nationals are complaining that they've been left behind. We cannot just take our diplomats and leave our citizens behind. I cannot tell you something. When some Qataris and French people were leaving yesterday, they turned back to Khartoum. So you see, you only hear one side of the story, not the other side of the story. We're dealing with thousands. We have the largest numbers of students that need to be evacuated. Do you want us to take one, two, three, four, five? I just said one little play. We can't do that. But the thing is, no matter when they leave, let them be safe, let them get out of there, let them reunite with their families, and then we'll take it from there. So I think you're making unfair comparisons. But yes, you could say it, was a, well, it could have been faster. Well, maybe yes, maybe not. But I know that the missions in Sudan, in Cairo, in uh, Ethiopia have been working 24-7 to get this thing out of the world. And when you say whatever, nobody knew the war was going to break out. Even the people there were not expecting the war would break out. You keep hoping against hope. That's not going to happen. But here is what it is, Millicent. Let us ensure that we get them out. Maybe yes, maybe not. But right now, they are born living, and we, they will live safely. We've evacuated several times before. There are challenges to evacuation, mostly because we are dealing with large, large, large numbers. You know, the largest anywhere, the largest anywhere. So we'll do everything. The missions are all on track. That's why the challenges they have, they have the challenges of funding and everything. But I believe the president has given uh, uh, instructions on that. So NEMA is responsible for evacuation and they've pulled all the stops. Like I said, the military is also on standby. Well, maybe airplanes is on standby. The military is on standby. NEMA is on standby. But the kid is getting them down safely, taking them to a location and transporting them back home. We know you have a lot of work ahead of you. We're looking forward to the good news. Thank you for joining us on the program today. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you.